Welcome to Why Is This Good, a podcast by the Naples Writers Workshop. I'm Christine, and I'm here with John. Hey, John. Hello. And this week, it is my turn. And I chose a story called The Fifth Story by Clarice Lispector. It is all about cockroaches, <laughs> which I identify with on such a deep level living in Florida. Yeah. It's a very, very short story. It's about two pages, but I'm going to read a bigger paragraph that I don't think will give it all away, so you'll still enjoy it. The third story, which now begins, is called The Statues. It begins by saying that I had been complaining about the cockroaches. Then the same woman appears on the scene, and so it goes on to the point where I awake, as it is beginning to grow light, and I awake, still feeling sleepy, and I walk across the kitchen. Even more sleepy is the scullery floor with its tiled perspective, and in the shadows of dawn there is a purplish hue which distances everything. At my feet I perceive patches of light and shade, scores of rigid statues scattered everywhere. The cockroaches that have hardened from core to shell. Some are lying upside down, others arrested in the midst of some movement that will never be completed. In the mouths of some of the cockroaches, there are traces of white powder. I am the first to observe the dawn breaking over Pompeii. I know what this night has been. I know about the orgy in the dark. In some, the gypsum has hardened as slowly as in some organic process, and the cockroaches, with ever more torturous movements, have greedily intensified the night's pleasures, trying to escape from their insides, until they turn to stone in innocent terror and with such but such an expression of pained reproach others suddenly assailed by their own core without even having perceived that their inner form was turning to stone these are suddenly crystallized just like a word arrested on someone's lips I love the cockroaches invoking the name of love in vain saying on a summer's night while the cockroach over there the one with the brown antenna smeared with white must have realized too late that it had become mummified precisely because it did not know how to use things with the gratuitous grace of the in vain it is just that I look too closely inside myself. It is just that I look too closely inside. From my frigid height as a human being, I watch the destruction of a world. Dawn breaks. Here and there, the parched antenna of dead cockroaches quiver in the breeze. The cockerel from the previous story crows. So that was the most poetic version of her stories. And she ends up telling like five versions. Well, it's called the fifth story. But at the beginning, she says something like, I shall tell at least three. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's the third. And the third is the most dramatic. And the other, she just kind of explains what happened in almost like a police report. I was complaining about the cockroaches. Someone told me how to make this stuff. So I made it. And then I woke up and they were dead. And then it gets a little more intense. And then by this third one, this is when I like really enjoyed the piece. It describes something like really simple as as dramatic as I think it deserves to be because she's slaughtering critters and I kill cockroaches all the time and I feel bad every time. I think I just identify way too much with like bugs, all small animals. And I totally get how she's describing, she's not really saying that she feels guilty, but she realizes that she's the one that brought death on dozens of bugs and they didn't just die. They died horribly and they died eating what they thought was food and then it hardened their insides, which I gotta look this shit up because if it works like this, might need to get some. We have a serious roach problem. <laughs> but I would feel terrible about it. <laughs> I think it does work. Uh, that, that quickly? It, it dries them out, yeah. Oh, God. I've used like literally everything else. But anyway, this, was, this is just horrific. So I like when stories kind of like slow down and give kind of, I don't know, give cockroaches their due. She's not really saying that they're unfairly vilified or anything. She's just kind of owning her part in their death, right? Yeah. When we talk about cockroaches, we're always like, yeah, we have a roach problem and we destroyed them and they keep coming back and they're such a pain, blah, blah, blah. And she's just, she's looking at each individual one and, and she feels terrible about it. And I love that about this story. I don't think that's what the literary critics would say about this. <laughs> I think they'd more be talking about the form of the story, which is also really interesting. But this is the part of it that I really enjoyed. Did you enjoy it? I did. There's something, this story is metafiction. And that's, I think that's a word that's missing from our workshop that we should bring to it more often. To blow some minds? Oh, yes, maybe. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's this, this is like a commentary on the fictional process in certain ways. I don't know. I, the first one, like you said, is like procedural. It's just, these are the things that happen. The second one is kind of the character 
character's emotions, like who she is and how she feels about what she's doing. And then the third one is right. this this amazing imagery of this of what happened right. to the cockroaches and just kind of like you said, personalizing it for the cockroaches. Um, and that I am the first to observe the dawn breaking over Pompeii, making this, uh, it's called, the, she calls the third story statues, the statues. It's so reminiscent of the, the one they dug up Pompeii and discovered all those cavities yeah. where there used to be people. And it's built in layers like that. Like this could be the way you would build a story, you know, where you get the character down and like what their internal struggle is and then the imagery around what they're doing. And so it's the metafiction of it is so fascinating. Yeah, it's almost as if this would be a good prompt maybe, right? Like write your same story three different ways, but keep it real short. Write the first one like a police procedure or write the second one by introducing, like you said, like the emotion and then write the third one like it's the most dramatic scene. Yeah, to your point, stringing them all together is what creates like this different reading experience. Like we're being kind of told, like I'm going to tell you some stories and then we're reading them knowing there's another one. Like we're anticipating what's happening and yeah, her commentary is what makes it meta, but yeah, I, I like by the end, I wasn't like totally sure what to take away from the fact that she told it three different ways, except for the part that I already said I enjoyed, which is like, there's probably a version of this that you can do to every story you've ever written. Not to say that there's anything wrong with it, but like you could probably zero in a little more. You could probably slow down a lot more. You could probably like pay attention to the small things in a scene that like you glossed over and maybe add some depth and just enhance what you already have. But yeah, there is some kind of layer of commentary about how she's intentionally doing that to her own writing and then like showing you all the iterations. Yeah, this reminded me of a story. It's, it's a science fiction story by uh, Stephen R. Donaldson and it was the first book. It was really a novella and then he turned it into a book because he added some commentary to the ending of it. And then that became like a five book series, which was a really good series, but the first book is kind of rough. It's hard to get into, but the premise is like something happens and he gives like the uh, kind of the newspaper view of it like this is what happened and then he gives a slightly different view where you get a little bit more of the characters and then another one and then it finally says and here's the real story and that's the title of the book is the real story and it gives the whole background for everything leading up to that moment that we see in the beginning so that when we finally return to that moment we understand all the motivations of all the characters and exactly what's going on with it and it's really it was a really interesting story in that way and this kind of reminded me of that because it's it's the same thing it's like okay first First story begins with I was complaining about the cockroaches. Next story, I was complaining about the cockroaches. Third story begins by saying that I had been complaining about the cockroaches. <laughs> and it just so it keeps returning to the same moment over and over again and, and tells a different story of the same events. And you kind of get deeper and deeper and deeper as you're going through. I feel like the concept of showing something from different perspectives and then bringing it all together like in a final climax is something that we probably have seen in movies more often. Oh yeah, yeah, it's been done. Yeah, it's been done, but like in fiction it's it is totally different and i'm thinking about a young adult series that i bought this summer because like i don't know how i found it but i was probably looking for something for this podcast and anyway i like found a snippet of the book online and i was reading it at work and all of a sudden i was like 10 pages in and i was like i should just buy this like i'm already like flying through this it's probably good right so i bought it like not really realizing i was buying like a young adult book and i was like embarrassed but i was like whatever so it's called it's called like something like another day or one more more day or again or something. Anyway, this guy wrote three books. And the first is about this kid that every morning wakes up in a different person's body and has to live out their day. And then he meets a girl that he likes and has to tell her what's going on with him and why every time he sees her, he's a different body. Really interesting premise. Flew through the first book. The second book was the exact same story told from the girl's perspective. Wow. And it was... That's interesting. I thought at first until it was scene by scene wow. and there is something about the way that that was executed that told me this was young adult because I think what I wanted as a mature 32 year old woman reading this during quarantine was for that to be like a different take instead of just a different perspective and so it's not as simple I don't think it's just switching perspective it's kind of like when are you switching why are you switching and then like how is it all gonna like pan out exactly and then like obviously what Clarice is doing here is 
something that looks simple, right? Like the way that we've suggested maybe this could be a prompt. Do it three different ways in this order. But like the fact that she likes all drawing it together and then like the fifth story is like some bizarre kind of like tangent. She's doing something expert here that's like a little like I have to reach to understand it. And that's when you've like executed this well. Not just like I'm going to do this trick and you know already what the trick is, but then you have to like drag yourself through it. Like she's she's pulling the trick, but she's adding something. Yeah, I think that's what makes this metafiction it's not just i'm pulling a trick it's look at me pull a trick watch the way i do this Mm -hmm. and she it's playful you know she says uh although they constitute one story they could become a thousand and one were i to be granted a thousand one nights that's the first paragraph and that's kind of setting up as like i'm just gonna play yeah this is playful this is playing and then you get these deep deep emotions and these the imagery like the pathos of the imagery in the third story is also deep and it's like look at what fiction can do (laughs) you know it's not just i'm practicing but it's i'm really pushing it to its extremes i don't know if you remember this but i read a story that revisited the same scene like three times it was about my ex and it was like he had a dream and he turned to me and said this and I rewrote the story like four different times and I was trying to like come to a conclusion and I remember people anyway like in the workshop liked what I was trying to do but like it didn't fully work for them and like for me it didn't fully work either but I liked the format and like kind of reading hers I kind of want to revisit that because the key and the feedback I remember getting is that each of them has to be different but it has to also add something it can't just be like here's another iteration. Like it has to take you down like another stair, you know? Yeah. I don't remember that piece, but I I know what you're It was obviously not memorable. Either that or it was before (laughs) I joined. No, you're definitely there. But anyway, I'm not offended. It could be. I also took a break. Remember when... uh, You took a break when your kids were born? Yeah, when kids were born. (laughs) I blocked that out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I'm like learning about like, what about this works? And maybe the key, like you said, is that it is meta and she's kind of letting you be privy to it i'm gonna revisit my story with that in mind thank you clarice (laughs) what else do you like about the cockroaches um not much i do not like cockroaches (laughs) it's kind of a terrifying story in a certain way every single night they crawl up the drain pipes yes oh my god i don't want yeah and she has this like realization at one point she's like what am i supposed to do slaughter them every night and like that i feel like is could have almost been the impetus for why she decided to write about this this way. You know, like you start killing these things and it is that police procedural. It's this thing that you just do. But it's only like upon further reflection that you maybe confront <laughs> the real, like she's having a crisis almost. The fuelty of existence. <laughs> I don't know. It also reminded me of how one time I wrote about lizards and my cat killing the lizards and someone was like, what is the story about? And I was like, you know, I think it's about the lizards. And I was not trying to be funny because every time my cat kills a lizard, I have like a mini ceremony and I bury it. And sometimes I cry. And I love stories like this where it's like, yeah, the most important things are like the everyday things that you assign or recognize the deeper meaning in. I think I asked you that question because I think that there was another character in that story that the lizards were almost seeking to represent the way you had written it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember another member of the workshop being like, is there like something you're not telling us? And I was like, (laughs) okay, that's enough. I'm not paying for this session. That's so why I, I try to say whenever <laughs> I give my comments, I'm going to treat this like fiction. Yeah, right. <laughs> These are characters. It doesn't sound anything like you or your life. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so yeah. And, I, and when I was searching for this, I think I was searching for Hispanic writers. And then I had to look up her background because she was born in into a Jewish family in Western Ukraine. Oh, wow. But then as an infant, she moved to Brazil. So I was confused after I had found her and then like read her name. I was like, oh, she's Hispanic, but her name is Clarice Lispector. So just like a really interesting kind of upbringing. And um, she was born in 1920. And I'm not sure when she would have written that but um that also gave me like an interesting perspective like because this is 2020 100 years after she was born and whenever she wrote it probably like at least 40 or 50 years from the time she wrote it and we're still dealing with cockroaches this way like this story still feels so relevant compared to the last podcast where we were talking about the misfit and like you know people still get killed and bad stuff still happens but that story felt like of its time right yes 
yes. had a car crash. They couldn't call for help. They were in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell phones or airbags. Yeah. And the story, I was like, I had to remind myself like when it was written. Oh yeah, reading it the first time I read it, I was confused as wait, is this taking place in Pompeii the night before the volcano going off? Which there's nothing that says it's not. There's also nothing that says it didn't take place last week. You know. Yeah, and almost the fact that she was kind of like tongue in cheek and meta felt like a very modern day technique oh yeah yeah like if she was alive today i feel like she'd be writing like snarky feminist stuff in the new yorker that's right or maybe like something that she already wrote like could stand up today i don't know it made me want to read more of her stuff yeah that's true very good. Uh, do you have a takeaway from this, John? Well, I like metafiction. I used to think I didn't, but I do. But I like just the idea of having fun. I know. I think Rob had that takeaway several times. <laughs> yeah. That, Rob was like, can we just have some fun? Yeah. But this is, like I said, it's playful, the, you know, in certain ways. And then it, it gets, it really hits you with the, it's so short and yet it goes so deep. And the depth, just, you know, every section, it's like, okay, now I'm going to go take you further. Now I'm going to take you further. And I like that idea of going further just like pushing the boundaries of your fiction right it's like all right we're gonna go further with this that's my takeaway yeah i think my actual takeaway will be to like go revisit the story that it reminded me of and probably apply some of these techniques and see if that helps it get to where i think it could be Ooh, nice but my other takeaway would be kind of maybe what i'll turn into a prompt for our private facebook group which you should join <laughs> me listener <I'll> listen. listener <laughs> your listener which is that you could probably zero in with this kind of like attention to detail or like drama in certain parts of a piece that you've already written. And um, it's not something you have to do or should do for everything, but it's probably like a good kind of technique. Maybe when you're doing like a second draft of something that you've written to think about places where you can kind of just like stop and slow down and show us the details or take on like a totally different description of something like this. Like let your character have like a dramatic monologue and instead of doing the dishes let your character think about like the titanic sinking as she's like sloshing around you know like you can have like this kind of departure that adds something that doesn't have to be like important to the plot or anything here obviously it's the whole point of the piece but i think you could do it probably all the time there's probably a scene or 10 scenes in everything i've ever written where i could have made it better if i had gone back with that idea or with that eye like how can i make the scene better or how can i make this boring scene good yeah that's a good take away wow thanks <laughs> we've only done like 40 of these episodes and i'm still coming up with takeaways so that's right apparently there's still things to learn yeah always very good well thanks guys if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing to our monthly newsletter at our website, NaplesWritersWorkshop.com. And for daily writing tips, industry news, and great short fiction, join our Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash Naples Writers Workshop.